Russia and Ukraine have agreed to a 12 hour limited ceasefire in some parts of Ukraine to let civilians have a chance to get away from the fighting. Outside of Kyiv, people are walking across a destroyed bridge to get to safety, carrying just a few belongings. It's mostly women and children and the elderly. The Russians have bombed this evacuation route before, but today there is no shelling. These Ukrainians are hoping to escape while they can. Nearby, there are buses waiting, waiting to take them further west, where they won't face the constant bombardment of their neighborhoods. As many as 18,000 people are expected to leave Kyiv today, and other safe corridors are also opening up. The ceasefire that Russia and Ukraine have agreed to calls for six escape routes for Ukrainian civilians. People who live in those six cities will have 12 hours today to get out safely, if Russian forces hold to the deal. In the past, they have not. The humanitarian crisis is getting more severe in Sumy in the northeastern part of the country. Russian missiles hit homes and rescuers looked for survivors. In the south, in a city called Mariupol, conditions can't get much worse. People are looting stores for food. They're melting snow for water. They have no heat power or medicine. Russia has the whole place surrounded. They've launched missile strikes. As many as 200,000 people are trapped. Why shouldn't I cry? She says, I want my home. I want my job. I'm so sad about the people and the children, the city. U.S. intelligence officials think the crisis will deteriorate. Russian losses are more than what Putin expected. Ukrainian resistance has been strong. The CIA director told Congress he thinks Putin may lash out with more bombings of Ukrainian cities. I think Putin is angry and frustrated right now. He's likely to double down and try to grind down the Ukrainian military with no regard for civilian casualties. A chance for Ukraine to get some fighter jets from Poland has apparently fallen through. Poland was offering to transfer 28 MiG-29s to the U.S. so they could be given to the Ukrainian Air Force pilots who know how to fly the Soviet planes. But the U.S. said no to the deal. U.S. officials were worried it might be seen as an act of war against Russia. Congress is close to working out another aid package for Ukraine. The leaders of both parties have reached a deal to provide $13 billion in weapons and humanitarian help.